Hey everybody, uh, I just wanted to share something with you on this holy Saturday uh, that has impacted me in a great way, just perspective of the cross and what Christ has done for us. Um, yesterday was Good Friday and we recognize and we remember and we continue to remember what Christ has paid for on the cross. And it was several years ago that I came across, in fact, it was just a couple years into ministry, I came across a book by Johnny Erickson Tata called When God Weeps. And in that book, uh, there's a short story and account of what the, the, the day that Jesus was crucified, what that felt like and what that looked like in the relationship between the Son and the Father and the world. So I just wanted to read this to you. Just take a couple minutes and read it to you. I'm, I'm doing that outside of a uh, here at the church at the dogwood at a dogwood tree, we have some of the most beautiful dogwood trees, and this one is actually my favorite uh, dogwood tree that I've ever seen. It's just huge. It's larger than most. And if you've never taken your children out to see a dogwood tree and just talk about the representation of the blood of Christ and the washing white as snow and letting them see the flower, they're in uh, full bloom right now in our area. So, so take a moment to do that. But I just wanted to read this to you. So. Listen to this story. It, it reads this way. The face that Moses had begged to see was forbidden to see, was slap bloody, Exodus 33, 19 and 20. The thorns that God had sent to curse the earth's rebellion now twisted around his own brow. On your back with you. One raises a mallet to sink in the spike, but the soldier's heart must continue pumping as he readies the prisoner's wrist. Someone must sustain the soldier's life minute by minute, for no man has this power on his own. Who supplies breath to his lungs? Who gives energy to his cells? Who holds his molecules together? Only by the sun do all things hold together. Colossians 1.17 The victim wills that the soldier live on. He grants the warrior's continued existence. The man swings. As the man swings, the son recalls how he and the father designed the medial nerve in the human forearm, the sensations it would be capable of. The design proves flawless. The nerve performs exquisitely. Up you go, they lift the cross. God is on display in his underwear and can scarcely breathe. But these pains are a mere warm-up to his other and growing dread. He begins to feel a foreign sensation some, somewhere during this day. An, un, an unearthly foul odor began to waft, not around his nose, but around his heart. He feels dirty. Human wickedness starts to crawl up upon his spotless being. The living excrement from our soul, the apple of the father's eye, turns brown with rot. His father, his father... He must face like this. From heaven, the father now rouses himself like a lion, disturbed, shakes his mane and roars against the shriveling remnant of a, of a man hanging on a cross. Never has the son seen the father look at him so, never felt even the least of his hot breath, but the roar shakes the unseen world and darkens the visible sky. The son does not recognize these eyes. Son of man, why have you behaved so? You have cheated, lied, lusted, gossiped, murdered, envied, and hated. You have cursed, robbed, overspent, overeaten, fornicated, disobeyed, embezzled, and blasphemed. All the duties you have shirked, the children you have abandoned. Who has so ignored the poor, so plaid the coward, so belittled my name? Have you ever held your razor tongue? What a self-righteous, pitiful drunk. You who molest young boys, peddle killer drugs, travel in cliques, and mock your parents. Who gave the boldness, who gave you the boldness to rig elections, form it, revolutions, torture animals, and worship demons? Does the list ever end? Splitting families, raping virgins, acting smugly, playing the pimp, buying politicians, practicing exhortation, filming pornography, accepting bribes. You have burned down buildings, perfected terrorist tactics, founded false religions, traded in slaves, relished, 
relishing every morsel, morsel in bragging about it all. I hate, loathe these things about you. Disgust for everything about you consumes me. Can you feel my wrath? Of course the son is innocent. He is blameless itself. The father knows this, but the divine pair have an agreement an unthinkable must now take place. Jesus will be treated as if he personally were responsible for every sin ever committed. The father watches as his heart's treasure, the mirror image of himself, sinks drowning into raw liquid sin. Jehovah's stored rage against humankind for every century explodes into a single direction. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? But heaven stops its ears. The sun stares up at the one who cannot, who will not reach down and reply. The Trinity had planned it. The Son endured it. The Spirit enabled it. The Father rejected the Son whom he loved. Jesus Christ, the God-man from Nazareth, perished. The Father accepted his sacrifice for his sin and was satisfied. The rescue is accomplished. Now I want you to think about that. All of sin of all mankind, for all history. In one moment, Jesus felt that. But that wasn't the greatest pain of all. The beating wasn't the greatest pain of all. It was the forsaking that came down from the Father. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit in perfect unity, in perfect relationship. God needs no one. God is full and perfect in and of Himself. He doesn't need you. He doesn't need me. But yet, He wants us to know Him. And He has done everything. And He did everything to make sure that we can have a relationship with Him. Find our purpose in Him. Find salvation in Him. Find out who we are in Him. Everything is because of what He has done. That was Good Friday. This is Holy Saturday. Live that out. Tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow is Easter. Jesus not only paid for sin, but tomorrow it all begins. A new, fresh, clean slate for humanity. Jesus paid for it all. He's overcome sin. He's overcome the grave. So make sure you tune in tomorrow at 1030 at CelebrationLive.org, on Facebook, on YouTube. Share that. Uh, We've been blown away at the way that you are engaging in social media, making sure that the name of Jesus gets out. Because you're the only way that that happens is you sharing, you liking, you commenting. So we love you. I'm so excited that when this is all over, we get together, but I'm pumped to preach tomorrow about the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he has done. It'll be the last part in our series, Crowded, and it's entitled Alone in the Crowd. So we will see you. I love you. Like and share this. Maybe maybe it'll bless somebody, Uh, and see you tomorrow at 1030. Bye.